Finger Puppet Management Project, Team Kite. The setting is a factory in Middleford, Denmark. Briar Plastics is a mold injection factory that makes custom parts for companies in varied industries, such as tractor companies, tanning bedding companies, cotton candy machine companies, and many more. The company meets several ISO standards, but it also discriminates and that has resulted in low morale, lower productivity, and lesser safety standards resulting in accidents. There is also a lack of job advancement opportunities for those discriminated against. Discrimination in the workplace and unequal treatment can happen in many ways in the workforce. Employers can treat males better than females or vice versa, whites better than blacks and young better than old. The goal of this project is to highlight the problem of discrimination in the workplace while also showing that it can be fixed with efficient management concepts. The target audience in the general workforce between ages 20 and 55. Our presentation will be broken up into seven short videos, including discrimination issues and management concepts such as conceptual management skills, individual decision making, moral rights approach, justice approach, differentiation, integration, globalization, and culture. Our presentation will be done using a voiceover PowerPoint. Bill is a male in his 40s. He is divorced, smokes, and sometimes drinks on his lunch break in his car. When asked if he had ever been to the beach, he responds by saying that he, quote, doesn't need to see the ocean because he has a big lake in his town, and that is enough. Javier is an immigrant from Central America. He left his country because he was not able to make enough money there to support his disabled daughter. He misses his daughter and family and has plans to return home permanently to live with her after he makes some money in the factory. Myron is an African employee who has started taking classes at the local community college at night. He is supporting himself by working at the factory during the day. Rachel is a receptionist who works in the front office, notices the discrimination. Alexander is an immigrant from Romania. He is only allowed to work in a closed in silk screen room spray painting products. The company provides him a mask, but it is not the best quality and he breathes in dangerous materials every day. Alexander has two children in college that he is trying to support. Mike is the HR manager in his 40s. He has high conceptual management skills, uses moral rights approach and justice approaches to solve issues. Javier, a Latin immigrant, works for Briar Plastics for over five years. He was trained on all the factory machines and was very good at each station. Even though he was great at his job, he was trapped by management to only work in two parts of the factory, one area known as the oven and the other with the bandsaws. The manager, Bill, assigned Javier and other immigrants to dangerous stations because he knew that they were least likely to complain. They worked faster and would take whatever was offered to them because they had no other choice. Bill would not let the other immigrants take their full breaks or lunches. He talked down to them and didn't pay attention when they asked for safety materials. Most importantly, immigrants made much less than non-immigrant employees. Bill also discriminated against the black employees in the same way as the immigrants, but not as badly. Immigrants and blacks performed all the dangerous, hot and dirty work for the factory, while white employees worked in the office or in air conditioned or cooler factory rooms. Rachel, a receptionist in the front office, has noticed the divide in preferential treatment and is keeping her opinion to herself for now. On episode two, we present concepts such as individual decision-making, moral rights approach, 
and justice approach. As Rachel goes on her 30 minute lunch break, she overhears a conversation between Bill and Myron. Bill says, Myron, why are you in the office? You should be out in the warehouse in a heat where you belong. Rachel's flabbergasted at what she just heard Bill said and is faced with a decision to make. Rachel says, if I decide to tattle on Bill to HR, then the harassment can finally stop. But if I do, then I might not get the promotion I was promised by Bill. If I don't, then the harassment will continue. Rachel cannot stand Bill's attitude anymore and uses her moral rights approach to report the discrimination. She focuses on the examination of moral rights standing of action independent of their consequences. Rachel says, I am sorry for interrupting you, but you may want to keep an eye on Bill because it seems like he is disrespecting the employees. Mike uses the distributive justice approach to try to solve this issue. Not only HR believes in Rachel, but also stumbled upon Bill in the act of harassing a different employee. HR will keep an eye on Bill to build a report. At the end of the day, Rachel discovered a problem within the workplace, developed objectives, generated alternatives, selected alternatives, implemented decisions and evaluated decisions, and felt relieved that HR will now take care of it. On episode three, we will present two management concepts, differentiation and integration. Differentiation, the extent to which tasks are divided into subtasks with specialized skills. Integration, the extent to which various parts of an organization cooperate and interact with each other. The setting is the factory's vacuum forming production floor. Three employees were asked to work together to create safety equipment for the 2016 Olympic Games. Alexander is getting very sick because of his hazardous workstation, so Bill, his supervisor, decided to move him to the mold injection floor to work with Myron and Javier. Bill instructed Alexander to speed up the machine cycle. Bill thinks that immigrants and minorities should work harder than other employees. Javier is not able to keep up with the new production cycle time and gets yelled at by Bill. With no other option, Javier starts to bypass quality checkpoints and some parts start to come out deformed. Myron noticed the deformed parts but does not care too much and packs them to ship them out as they are. Bill's attitude toward Javier and Myron has impacted the factory production in a negative way. As a matter of fact, there is no integration between all three workers even though each one is an expert on their position. For Rachel Discuska's Going Global. We will present some assumptions, values, and beliefs of the Japanese culture. Rachel plans on expanding the local company to become global and sell their products in such places as Europe, China, Japan, etc. The only problem is she cannot speak their language. When suddenly she has an idea. I got it, says Rachel. What if I were to understand their culture in a way and maybe then I'll be able to sell our products better? She tried meditating, eating with chopsticks, celebrated tradition, she once never knew, and even dressed like them at some point. Finally, the day came for the live Skype call between the foreign companies, and she wanted to make a great impression. She, she knew she had it in the bag. The CEO of Japan. Oh, hello, Rachel. It's great to finally meet you. I reviewed your company, work, and product, and would love to carry your product. Rachel. Oh, wow, thank you. It would be a great honor, sir. I know this might sound crazy, but I actually mastered how to use chopsticks just to prepare for this interview. CEO of Japan. Oh, it is quite all right, Rachel. Believe it or not, not everyone has that. It's quite tricky, huh? As they both laugh off the situation, they say their goodbyes and begin their forever partnership. CEO of Japan. Farewell, Rachel. It was nice doing business with you, Rachel. Farewell, you're very welcome as well. Sitting behind his desk, he wonders why he cannot connect with any of his employees, when suddenly it hits him. Bill says, I got it. It's because I don't listen to my associates as much as I talk to them. Maybe if I become a better listener, then I'll become a better manager. Bill walks into the warehouse to start a conversation with Myron. Bill. Hey Myron, how's the family doing? 
Myron. Uh huh, sir. I don't have a family. Bill. Right. Awkward. Uh, so how's it going in there? Myron. It's great, sir. Everything is going according to plan. Bill. Well, it was great talking to you. Bill then goes over to Javier, where he does the same. Bill. Hey there, Javier. Just wanted to see how everything was going. Javier. It's okay, sir. Bill. Okay? What's the matter here? Javier. Well, getting paid minimum wage and working in this heat is killer. Bill. I understand. Well, how about this? If I see the effort you keep putting in, I will talk to the corporate about giving you a raise. Javier. Thank you so much, sir. Bill Freight felt great after learning about his employees. He feels like a better manager now for communicating with them and connecting with them. He now hopes to know the employees more to become friends to them. On episode 6, we talk about the difference between groups and teams. Bill is increasing his knowledge and managing other people. He is willing to turn his group into a team by showing his subordinates the importance of the degree of interdependence, coordinated interaction, and strong sense of members' personal responsibility for achieving specific group outcomes. Mike, the HR manager, is impressed with Bill and his team improvements and is willing to share with the top managers. In episode 7, we present leadership concepts. Bill becomes a better person and is able to get the respect he always wanted from his subordinates. He understands the reason why he was never able to achieve his goals before, and now he has a real team with happy and productive members. Here are our references. Thanks for watching.